welcome. Welcome, everybody. Hey, oh, all right. <laughs> it's the episode three. Okay. Right? Didn't yeah. think we were keeping track, but let's see how long we can keep track without actually keeping track. <laughs> welcome back to the program, everybody. This Glad is Pablo here. and Wes, Wes and Pablo, us. and this is new teacher, the yes, new teacher is. talk podcast. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's do it. So let's get right into it. Yeah, let's overview uh, what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to talk about make everyday magical. Magic days. And, and then, then how to find uh, money. Yeah, how to money. Find money for your classroom. That's money, always money, important. Money. And then how to seek out community partners who will partner with you in your classroom for and better And they'll partner learning. with you because they're in the community. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go. All right. Make every day magical. So yes, I sir. thought about talking, you know, over over the course of my educational career, Yes. I have both been really bad at this and then really good at this. Let's talk and about then, the good parts. Yeah. I think that's what we need to talk about. <laughs> but know that you won't get it all at one time yeah. like it's not just going to come to you you're not going to be magical from day yeah. one or are you unless you're a magician and that's your job that's right so when we're talking about making everyday magical it's providing peak experiences or experiences yes. for kids that that really matter that really stick up here in their mind's eye when when their when their educational career meaning their public school career yeah. or private or wherever they're going k-12 is over yeah and that they remember that there are those those spots and times where things are really magical yeah. memorable and, and yeah. we and in our last program we talked about making memorable and yeah. moments or experiences yeah. so it's important for us to continue that theme this week and making things magical because the classroom somewhat sometimes can be a snooze bill yeah it yeah. can be a snoozer and that does not enhance learning yeah it just doesn't so i th- i think uh bringing like Understanding that there's highs and lows of emotions in anything, like in a movie, in a song, like there's there's this rhythm, right? So the classroom, you have to understand that you're planning for those high moments. Like, how are you going to get them jazzed? How are you going to get them excited? So I have some really basic, fundamental daily routines that just help, like, provide those emotional connections to students so that when you are going for, like... um like a higher stakes kind of emotional sure. magical moment, um, it works. So one is I would randomly call on students, um, which is a pretty common practice. Um, mm-hmm. But I would use I I was driving to work one day, um, and I was in a gas station, and they had a lotto pin. So it was like a ballpoint pin, and then the top part of the pin was clear. I know. You know, exactly. you know I what I'm it. talking about? I you had, had it. that Go, too. Going. I had it. And then there's like a clear bubble on the top. And so there's all these. I think they had numbers one through 60. I just I just popped the top off, took out the numbers that didn't match my seat numbers and then put it back on. So much smarter than me. Like (laughs) 50. There's not a miss. There's not a 50, Mr. Diaz. (laughs) So I would shake the pen. So there's this little sound effect. Shake, shake, shake. And like everybody knows, oh, he's going to call. Oh, yeah. You had the one with the battery. yeah, 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 yeah. I had that, too. Um, and so then the numbers fall down into the pin. You can see them. You go number nine, whatever one's on, on the bottom. But that little um, kind of like like audible trigger, they hear it. Um, but then it's also, it, oh, he's going to call on somebody randomly. So it's these things about relationships and rituals. Um, and also it's it's about c- accountability ultimately. Right. But it, yeah. it was fun. It wasn't like I'm um, – I, I've seen other systems. I've seen teachers just calling on people like, hey, you, give me the answer. This just put a little bit of fun into it. And for some reason, they liked it. No, they do. And you're typically, when you're in the classroom, if you're not in the classroom yet, that you're typically going to call on those hands that go up because you feel good as a teacher yeah. that somebody wants to answer your question. Yeah. But you're going to find in classrooms that there is um, Johnny, Jamie, you know, Joanne, who always know the answer to everything. Yes, yes. And they're just that kid. And it's it's not their fault. But how do you as a teacher um, provide moments like that, yeah. you know, not grant. So there's different levels of yeah. magic, but right. that's one of them because it makes them feel good. Yeah, yeah. And that's an emotion you want to have in class and you want to try to have it as much as possible. And um, so how did you do it in the classroom? What was your magical moments? Yeah. What do you think of? So mine. Um, so I have another channel called Teach Using Technology. So I've always in um, that's not a plug, but it is a plug. But um, <laughs> sorry, my, not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
my my thought was always how can I one how can I get closer to the students that are either troubled or mm-hmm. just need help mm-hmm. or just need more help. Yeah. Did I just say that twice? Um, troubled. Need, anyways, <laughs> or that just need um, that assurance, that affirmation yeah. as well in a certain way of their learning. So um, I couldn't be everywhere. You yeah. can't duplicate yeah. yourself. But it's technology true. allowed me to do that. Yeah. And that being said, I use a, a few software programs early on that allowed me to engage the class mm. in fun, dare I say, learning. Okay. Fun does not have to be separate from the actual learning process. Now, I know there are serious, This is we have a serious stakes game of sure. testing, the yeah. T word, which yeah. I'm not very <laughs> fond of, just to put it out there. Um, but nonetheless, I my students were always prepared. Yeah. They were prepared for life, yeah. right? And that's, I felt, way more yeah, important than number a one, right? high stakes test. Yeah. yeah. And so once I kept on that, I just, I try to utilize technology in that way. Um, just playing games, through games, I felt like my mm. class, certain experiences within my class were good, but then other experiences weren't. Yeah. They just didn't Give me an work. example of the games, like through the technology. Uh, so most of them were, uh, the, when we had the smart boards, mm-hmm. the interactive whiteboards, what I like to utilize was the interactivity of reveal. So I would create, mm. I would create through with their software, different um, ways to reveal information. So, cool. but the student would yeah, come yeah. up. So the idea, this, the, the problem with these, the uh, interactive whiteboard, yeah. it went to the way of just a very dynamic, teacher. I guess, teacher friendly, just whiteboard wasn't very interactive, right? Because students were still their butts was their butts were in their seats. Yeah, and the teacher was controlling it. Right. So for me, students were Review. I mean, I had hundreds of different lessons, so yeah, I, yeah. not one stands out. Uh, although there's one game called Pico Fermi Bagel, which <laughs> I think I remember. Did I tell you about yes. that? Yeah, but I don't remember. Yeah, so if you've ever played Mastermind, okay, this we should probably cut this section, this this part of the <laughs> podcast because we're gonna go on forever on games. But if you ever played the game Mastermind, but I it think was that's that's the, a good point. Is games make the learning magical? Oh, for right? sure. I yeah. mean. And that's, you know, we talked about bringing your passions in. I love playing board games. And I think most kids love playing games. They're naturally, they naturally love to play. And so. Anyways, Mastermind. Yeah. So uh, Mastermind, you hide, basically you hide four pieces, four different color uh, notches or pieces. And the person uh, that's uh, in front of you or trying to guess the order and Mm -hmm. the pattern of these, these little uh, buttons or numbers. So these buttons, different colored, they have to get the orientation correct in, okay. in, in the right. And so they had 10 chances. So they would get closer and closer. And we kept giving them clues. Yes, right color, wrong uh, wrong location yeah. kind of thing until they started figuring out a yeah. pattern. And then they could kind of guess more. Um, they could guess, guess it down until they finally got it. But in certain cases, you would, you know. Uh, time you'd out or out. Yeah, you'd yeah. run out of so but i utilized it i utilized the same game but it was called pico Fermi bagel same idea and what we'd use it we'd use it in math we'd use it in language arts we'd use it in science cool. just in different ways i would just change the content yeah. inside of it so it was super fun yeah and engaging and i know it was it was moments like that that made it memorable or magical yeah. because kids ask can we play that game yeah, yeah. and it wasn't because Again, sometimes they weren't learning. I think kids are always learning, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, hey, if you're not in a specific content standard or subject, does not mean they're learning. Yeah. So you need to take that into account in your uh, kind of 180 days uh, opportunity yeah. when you when you start teaching. You just reminded me of a game I used to play for review, and that would be we'd put all the desks at the perimeter of the classroom so everyone had a seat uh, facing inward. And then there would be one person in the center and they would call out a like physically observable characteristic like everyone wearing blue or everyone with socks on. Mm. And then they would have to stand up and they had to switch seats and they couldn't go to an adjacent seat. So if I said like everybody who has brown hair or something like that, everyone who had brown hair stand up and they'd switch and the person left in the middle would answer a review question. So it was very quick, but it was a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, no running kids. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But that was an easy, energetic way to get buy-in to review for like an assessment or something like that. Oh, that's 
That's it. That's yeah. just it. Yeah. But I, I want to stay on this a little bit longer. Um, maybe we'll shorten the other two segments. But <laughs> we actually um, hosted a passion conference mm. for sixth graders this year. Yeah. I know without a shadow of a doubt, it was magical just was by the great. conversations we yes. had and the um, ju- just the overall enthusiasm yeah. of the conference that we had for these yeah. students. This could have happened in the classroom. But there's, or at least yeah. in at their school site, they could have made it a special event. And it was the idea of just allowing students to find their interest, go deeper into their interest, and have a culminating event, a peak moment yeah. that allowed yes. them to remember. I know the kids yes. that got on stage. We had a variety of different opportunities yeah. to present, perform. Um, I won't go into those, but maybe another show. But I just remember yeah. them just with smiles from yes. ear to ear. Kids were having a great time. You can see they were jazzed. They're they were going excited. to remember that. Yeah. I remember my seventh grade trip to Yosemite. Mm. I remember my sixth grade trip to Catalina. Yeah. Those are both experiences. If you yes. can try to have those experiences in your classroom yeah. to a certain extent, yeah. you're going to create those magical moments. So if you think about field trips, typically, like in a district I used to work with, we had, I uh, was part of a project where we interviewed alumni. And I open with the question, tell me about your most memorable year in the school district. And like three quarters of the time, they would name an overnight trip. And it was just something that stood out as so different, um, had all these like emotion, like anticipation and, you know, fear, but like, like cool experiences, fun with your friends. Um, so it's like, how do you do that on the smaller scale, on a regular scale, yes. on a weekly, on a daily basis? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're on the same page. Yeah. A uh, little plug. Yeah, do it. Last week or last show, we talked about the power of, um, or yeah, two shows ago, we talked about the power of memorable moments. Memorable moments. Yep, yep. This is a great book, The Power of Moments. So get out there and, and check it out if uh, you get a chance. It has a lot of, actually, uh, a few good um, education educational yeah, yeah. ties or stories to just what similar to what we were talking yeah. about creating those peak moments yeah and the authors chip and dan he oh, yeah. they have chip. a couple other titles that are really good um crossover content for classroom teachers about helping content stick or ideas stick with people um yeah great all right well our next topic we have um slated talking about how to find classroom money money for your classroom and um i will say i um I don't feel like I had tremendous success with that myself, but I, I do know um, Donors Choose is a good website where you can post a need and ask people, share it socially on social media um, or email people and ask them for donations. I, I could probably count um, probably 20 at least teachers I know who have gotten Chromebooks or yeah. iPads or technology um, or classroom libraries. I've donated to people because they say, hey, we need a classroom library. and yeah, I just I donate. I'm like that's a worthy cause. So donors choose is one. Um, what about you? And the the thing is, I think that we need to keep in mind is we're it's not something we're supposed to do as teachers, but it's something that ends up invariably happening. Yeah, every teacher you see them at Target to start the year or Walmart yeah. or wherever you're shopping. And you see them pulling money out of their pockets yeah. because you care that much. To and and that up. shows a lot. That shows a lot to stock up whatever it be pencils binders about you know play-doh rubik's cubes whatever the case (laughs) may be and that's okay but um because we know that this is a free and public education especially if you're in public school Mm -hmm. you're teaching in public school that we are supposed to provide everything that a student requires um for their learning and yes but we want to create those moments or magical moments (laughs) um and that being said i think we need to find the donors choose of the world. Mm-hmm. You have your, um, you have your. Oh gosh, well, my mind. one that uh, we had a great experience with this year is our um, oh, yeah. state Go teachers ahead. union had a grant opportunity, and one of our teachers wrote uh, a grant, and got twenty thousand dollars for strengths based teaching. So working towards the strengths of the students or the passions of the students, their interests, um, and so they spent that that money to help the seventh graders get a better, more um, personalized learning experience. Um, that that was a great one. So it was a grant, you know, and it took time to write. That's true. Um, but the thing about some of those grants is they're often renewable or they'll they'll 
they'll like what they see back the granting organization they'll say please apply again so um i i would say it's worth exploring it's worth the time you invest in it yeah especially with companies um such as let's say mattel or science-based companies Mm -hmm. or what have you you can reach out to them and and sometimes they have an education arm and if you show if you show them what you are doing and provide let's say either a lesson or some type of um, feedback for them, you'll be surprised. I mean, you're gonna use the product anyways if you were thinking about doing that. It does not hurt to reach out to these companies. Um, We've done it in our district. We've had had success not only at the the teacher level, but also at the district level with our teachers on special assignments seeking out different opportunities. And things have kind of evolved and things are evolving as we speak. So um, those are opportunities that I mentioned. I think the the thought that went past me was foundations. Oh, foundations. Uh, So if you do have a foundation at your school, which is usually... Um, a parent-run mm-hmm. um, organization there, but it's the, not a PTA or. It, yeah. But it, it's it's separate from that. A lot of times they work together, mm-hmm. but there will be funds available on the on the monies raised uh, throughout yeah. the year based on whatever your foundation is and how they're collecting yeah. money. Yeah, so that's a great. Um, so we gave you a few things. Donors choose. Um, you can uh, look for foundations that exist. Um, uh, grants through. Um, Teachers unions, organizations, um, lots of lots of good stuff. Even your own school budget, you could go to the school site council, yeah. or if you have another um, decision making group like that on your campus, and say, "Hey, I would like to do this." And there's school funds sometimes sitting right there, and no one's asking for them. This and parents true. are going to that meeting, and if you show up and petition, you might get some of the school site funds for your your classroom or your initiative. Yeah. All right. So along those lines, yeah. um, moving right into seeking out community partners. Yeah. Those could be a source of in of uh, fun funding for you, yeah. And or they just could be partners. You know, it might yeah. not be actual funds, but it could be products or things that yeah. they could provide for you. And they're right there in your community, your local restaurant, yeah. your local uh, hardware store. You might need some things for your STEM, your STEM unit or True. your class yeah. or you know your maker space. Yeah. You need some nuts and bolts, and <laughs> you know they yeah. they if you ask and you let them know that yeah. you're an educator. Play that card up yeah. because, Absolutely. you know, I think we deserve it. We deserve it as educators to have a fully funded program yeah. and kind of go for the, you know, get after the things yeah. that we're really looking to do in our classrooms to create those magical moments yeah. for our kids. Yeah, I think um, always ask if there's a teacher or educator discount. It's just worth it. Yeah. Sometimes there's not one, but they'll go, oh, I didn't know you're a teacher. Let me give you a discount yeah, because yeah. there is a lot of respect and support in the community for what we do. Um, I had a good experience um, when I was coaching speech at a high school um, where we had a local service organization, Alliance Club, that had a speech con- contest. And so I went with the students to a breakfast meeting uh, where the students spoke. It was kind of like the local competition. Then they had a state and a national. Um, but just attending a local service organization and meeting the people. One of the things that happened for me is we had a middle school named after one of the gentlemen who was part of the Lions Club. And so oh, I got yeah. to meet the the person who that school was named after. And then you meet people in the community that you wouldn't normally have access yeah. to. So I would say find out if there's a Kiwanis, Rotary, Lions Club in your in your community and ask the principal, may I attend on our behalf just to share some good news with the community and see if they'll get you a sub for an hour in uh, one weekday morning to, to go do that. And that's just a way that you can work for the school and for your own classroom as well to represent the school and, and connect with the community. Yeah, totally, totally good. And don't don't forget about canvassing or serving your parents. Your yeah. parents have a wealth of opportunity to get you know, depending on where they work or what connections they yeah. may have. And and I'm not asking for money here. It's just you want to see what they what skill set they might yeah. have to bring value to your classroom. Um, it's out there regardless of uh, it could just be time that you're utilizing these yeah. parents for. And, yeah. and most want to give back to their children's education. True. So uh, I think that's an yeah. opportunistic way. And sometimes um, they might not be able to come into the classroom, but find a way because parents do want to help even as busy as they might be i think they want to help and they want to help their child's education yeah and there's there's a power in inviting someone 
whether or not they are able to or want to, to be recognized and validated and said, hey, I, w- I want to invite you into this uh, relationship as an educator with your student. Um, there's power in that. And just, you know, it's it's a way to recognize and honor people for being a part of the equation that is public education. So invite people into um, doing something with you. Woo! Yeah, that's it, man. That's it, man. Let's, All right. Let's get out of here. Let's end this. Thank you so much for Thank being with much. us this yes. week, yes. this show. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, like Wes we said, do, this we is do. show three. Um, I don't know how long I can remember what show we're on, but this is great. We're early on, and I hope uh, you're along the, uh, on this ride with yes. us and this journey. We're yep. really having fun thinking about these shows and putting them together for you new teachers or, again, teachers in general who want to learn reset. more about themselves yep. and reset. So um, next it. week. Yes, or, next I week. I keep saying Ooh. next week. Uh, next, next show. Time. Next, time, next time. Next episode. So we're going to talk about parent communication, how to improve your communication with parents, keep yep. them informed. Keep them informed. We're going to talk about volunteering. Fill up your plate on, mm-hmm. I, you're going to be a busy first year teacher, second year teacher, yep. but seek out Get those opportunities. Seek out those yes. opportunities. The power of yes. Remember, yes. we talked about that before. Yep. And then, uh, standing your ground while being an effective team member. Don't always just go along with the flow when you have thoughts to the contrary. Trust your instinct and speak your mind. We'll see you next time. All right. Woo! 